What's going on people, it's your boy 40. Now, the reason why I named this video Rafa Striking Dilemma because I didn't know where this video was going to end up. Now, two situations have occurred tonight. The first one, this whole Dwight Gale scenario with him leaving is starting to take a bigger, an even bigger snowball effect now. You know, people are starting to believe that he's on his way out, whether it's 18 million, whether it's 20 million. And here's a, here's a backstory to it, and just in case you haven't been kept up to speed with it. So, again, this news or this story broke about a couple of days ago, on Sunday, I believe, via the Daily Mail. People's like, ah, he's not gonna go anywhere. Top goal scorer for last season. Why would we sell him? Now it's starting to you know, have legs that the fact that he's worth something as part of the squad and obviously we're strapped for cash. So again, if we do sell him, we'd get an easy 15 to 20 million for him. And now you've got the likes of Lee sniffing around, Fulham sniffing around. And I don't know if it's the case of the media, not including myself, because I haven't <laughs> escalated this, but I'm just reporting what I see, have like, heightened it even more now. Now you've got the likes of Fulham after a striker now, they've just sold Sonny Aluko who's gone to Reading. Uh, Leeds are after a striker, obviously Chris Wood has ended up at Burnley, although they've just signed La Soga, someone who's, who we were after for a while on loan for the rest of the season. And now it's just loads of rumours knocking around now. Honestly, honest to God, I cannot wait for this transfer window to, to be put to an end now and hopefully see Dwight Gale still in a Newcastle United shirt. You know, everyone's talking, or not everyone should I say this, certain people saying that he's not ready for the championship, oh, not ready for the championship, sorry, ready for the Premier League. But yet he's not even given a chance. Give him half a chance, jeez. I mean, from what I remember correctly, he was like, one of Crystal Palace's top goal scorers before he left them uh, under Alan Pardew. And he barely played any games whatsoever. So again, he's got to be given some sort of a chance. Now we're already writing him off as like, ah, we'll take the 20 million pounds, we'll move on to something bigger and better. Hello? We're like three, four days away from the end of the transfer window. We've signed one striker and that was for five million pounds. So what does that say? I mean, it's taken this long just to get Hoslu in. Now you think we're gonna sell a 20 million striker and then bring in someone in for that amount of money. No chance whatsoever, because someone who's worth around about 20 million pounds is gonna A, want big wages, probably a lot more wages uh, than we can offer. And then obviously B, you know, people or teams will know that we've got 20 million to spend. So again, they'll go above and beyond having uh, asked for 20 million pounds. And you know what we're like as well. We'll try and undercut them and try and go for 15 million pounds, knowing that we've got 20 million pounds and probably got paid up front. So it's not gonna work. So that's, that's the other thing. And then worst case scenario, imagine if this happens again. Imagine if this happens again. Like we sold Andy Carroll and end up with Shevki Kuchki, Kuchki, sorry. We sell Dwight Gale and we end up with absolutely nobody. Nobody to bring in and replace him. So we're left with Hoslu, Mitrovic, which I'll get onto in a second, and Iosi Perez. Come on now, come on. You can just see it happening, you can just see it happening. That's dilemma number one. Now dilemma number two is Alexander Mitrovic. Now I touched upon it in a previous video, but I need to get it out. Just need to unwind about this whole situation now. Not only did Mitrovic make an absolute fool of himself, because he did it to himself. I don't know what was said, if Lanzini was winding him up before the incident occurred, but it happened. You could see it, it happened, and now people are sticking their, their oar in. Richard Keyes saying that, you know, Mitrovic de deserves to be found. And I agree, and Newcastle United fans will, will agree. Um, he shouldn't have done that, he shouldn't have put the elbow on him and why it wasn't reported on, on UK TV. I think he's been on being in sports for too long, mate, because it was. It was on match of the day, clear as day, three times over, four times over, if you're including the replays and, you know, all the rest of it now. And at least a referee, Mark Causey, has come to kind of, you know, balance it out, saying, yes, the Mitrovic situation was wrong, but again, these sort of things need to be consistent and then you would accept it more, you know, We've got four incidences in the last three, in our opening three games that we could talk about. The incidents with Harry Kane, yes, he got a yellow card, and yes, it was seen by the referee. That's the whole kind of 
offence that the referees are saying that it wasn't seen live in the game, it was seen afterwards. But again, I'm sure things could be overturned afterwards. Yes, it has happened the other way around where things do get overturned. So I'm sure that could be overturned if you looked at it carefully. And then you've got two incidences in the, in the Huddersfield game where you've got uh, a foul on Mbemba and then another foul on Hayden. Surely something should have come of that. If if we're going to be going on stamps and all the rest of it, that Shelby got a red card for in the opening game, then surely it's got to be the same even plat platform for both sets of candidates and both incidences. And then the fourth incident is uh, Mark Noble on Jamal LaSalle's when Jamal LaSalle's goes for a header. And Mark no Noble has a high foot and clearly catches him in the head. So again, out of all of those four incidences, I think, what, maybe one yellow card, maybe two? Is that it? Is that it? And yet, Mitch Mitro is up for a, uh, a free match ban. He's got obviously up to, I think, is it the 26th to appeal of August? But yeah, he's, he's probably going to have to take it, isn't he? Probably going to have to take it, and then that leaves us with uh, another striker out for three games at least. I mean, whether he'll be here or not by the end of the transfer window is another thing, because obviously there's other team sniffing around so that is the dilemma there i don't know i don't know no first things first keep your players keep your better players as well because again when we came up for the championship we was all talking about who's going to be here come the end of the window and everyone was like yeah dwight girl dwight girl's definitely got to be here you know top goal scorer top boy you know number nine shirt all the rest of it now now people say oh see you later mate yeah we'll get something better what? Seriously? Oh, I don't get it. And then obviously the Mitch of it situation here, it just speaks for itself. Like, we are time and time again, why it's not playing? And then you get incidents like this and you're like, oh, oh okay, yeah, that, that old one, you know, so. There's a dilemma for Rafa. Oh God, I'd hate to be in his shoes right now, especially with everything else that's going on. But again, I suppose that's what he's paid the big bucks for. And even him, whether, he, whether he'll be here by Christmas time, to, to even make these sort of choices. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, guys. Just had to unwind and get some steam off because this is confusing in the last couple of days of the window and I'm sure it's gonna get even worse. Great.